I think this video is going to be quite easy for me to do. It's the first and foremost thing on my heart and mind as the year 2018 comes to a wrap. And this video is living sober-mindedly and coping with life. And it's not that I have the answers, but there are verses and thoughts, people who are Christians, people who are not Christians, things that have come across my path this entire month of December. And what God has really put on my spirit is we have to remove anything that will infiltrate our mind and pull us away from going to the throne of God. I've done some videos that are similar to this talking about the tension, the stress of life. But this is more about our emotions. We have to learn to cope and be strengthened internally to be able to deal with things in this life. It's our calling in life. It's how we can be a testimony to the glory and power of our sovereign God so that when life drops the hammer on us, we know there's more in this world. So the verses are going to just fly. Everything is in the description below. But this video, I feel it's something we all need to hear. And that's why I'm willing to share. And this isn't about being sober as in just alcohol. And that is something that I've had to really pull in the reins on to make sure I am monitoring things. Uh, but it could be substance or it could be emotions and just so many other things that will try to change our mindset to escape what we need to hit head on. So it started with me reading a quote by a business leader and thinker named Simon Sinek. It's the book Leaders Eat Last, and it says, We are not victims of our situation. We are architects of it. We are architects of it. And when you think about the emotional response that we often give to things. Extra drama, extra stress, extra hardship. When we could just be submitting ourselves to God, showing our vulnerability to others, and submitting that, hey, we are powerless. We could be doing that, but instead, we might architect some other situation how we respond to things. I want you to really remember that quote. It stuck with me all month. So now I'm going to fly through some verses when I just looked up sober-minded in the Bible. Remember, this word can mean many different things. We'll get into it in a second, but I'm just going to fly through these verses. If you want to know which verse, which chapter, check the description, the notes below. Here we go. Be sober-minded. Be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Verse 2. The end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be self-controlled and sober-minded for the sake of your prayers. Three. Therefore, preparing your minds for action and being sober-minded, set your hope fully on the grace that will be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Therefore, an overseer must be above reproach, the husband of one life, sober-minded, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, able to teach. Older men are to be sober-minded, dignified, self-controlled, sound in faith, in love, and in steadfastness. And the last one. As for you, always be sober-minded, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. You have to find out what your vice is. I'm sure you know some triggers that might set you up a bad path. I mentioned alcohol would be something I need to keep a closer eye on. Not that I'm getting drunk, but just that it's something that might result to. This is something that a lot of people fall to. There's, there's countless vices. But there's a call here to be sober-minded, self-control. So what does sober-mindedness maybe mean the Greek or the Hebrew translation of what we have today? I have no clue if this is accurate, but it sure is helping me just speak truth to my soul. It's from gospelhall.org, link below. And it says, soberness, sobriety. Sober means, suggests the exercise of self-restraint. 
governs all passions and desires, enabling the believer to be conformed to the mind of Christ. To be sound of mind or call one's senses. To be free from the influence. Guys, this is the spiritual warfare. Because we're going to expect the worst happening in life. Now, with the protection of God being there to salvage and save some of the things we might understand, but ultimately to protect us for eternity, that much is very clear. He is there. But being sober-minded, you are going to get hit with something very soon. And how do you respond? I've talked a lot about sanctification, dealing with attention, but this is, are you altering Something that's instead of submission to God, and I am nowhere perfect. I'm a flawed, flawed person. But I am striving to submit to my Father. Abba, I need you. Daddy, help me in this situation. And then we can walk this life in joy, knowing that we are protected. That's what... I want you to experience, and being sober-minded, what does that mean to you? What do you have to remove that's a vice that stops you from letting you be drawn closer to your Father who created you? What is it? There's a lot of predictable things for so many different people, but what is it for you? This month has taught me that even just emotions... Good intentions, but emotions can distract me from what God's even teaching me. And it's just everything is flawed in this world. And we can learn how to harness it and submit it, surrender, and give it all to God. What is it for you? I know this video seems really, really heavy, but this has been one of the most important things I've ever learned. Um, those verses, I'm going to really try to memorize some of those from First Peter, Timothy, Second Timothy, Titus. And I'm just going to pray right now. Lord, if someone's watching this, the way you've shown such grace through my failures and give me so many opportunities to learn, and here we are again, to do the right thing by going to you before anything else that would take us away from just being totally clear-minded with you. Well, I pray that the viewer here can just encounter that same miraculous change where they can step back from the way they've maybe always just reacted to things or their default ways of vices, but really, this is breaking chains and finding the joy, not just a happiness, but the joy in following you by going to you for everything. I just pray that something in this video you can use, the Lord, and that can help whoever's watching. Amen. There's so much to experience in this year of 2019. I am grateful you watch this. And just find out what might be distracting you. Just give it to God. Kill it at the altar and give it to our Lord. He is there to protect you. He's there to protect you. He's there to protect you. Blessings, guys.